Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We'll get started pretty soon here. Please unmute your cameras. Thank you. Oh, I like your shirt, Riley. It's like cross colors <laughs> from the 90s. <laughs> Thank you. I actually just got it yesterday. Wait, I can't hear you. Let me try to turn it up. What'd you say? Oh, I said I just got it yesterday. It's so cute. Good morning, Shani. Good morning, Jordan, Haley, Vaughn. Now their microphones are turned off, right? Yeah. Good morning, Sarah. Now why is it saying Mama? She she has a child. Probably like that's her screen name, like her app. You know how you do the <laughs> Good morning, Miss V. This is Lydia. Good morning, Lydia. Oh, I thought that was the one. Sorry. Okay, I'm going to take roll really quick and then we'll get started. Who all did some homework last night? I did. Well, this morning mostly. Awesome sauce. Right here with the ski father. So. Okay, guys, we're going to start in hair design. So go to your learn section. And then I want you to go over to the right side of the screen and click on the hair design. That's the second one. This is actually chapter 10. I think I want to try to type in 10.1. You know, I did that yesterday. It didn't work really well. But... Well, it worked for you. There we go. Hair design theory, everybody. It looks like this. If you type in 10.1, it's the third one over. Mine went to 10.1. Uh, oh, there. I'm right there. <laughs> um, it's actually 10.1. It starts off at 10.1. Yes. Okay. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Mr. Narcy will be expounding and teaching theory on hair design, because you guys had hair design at the beginning of the week. And of course it goes with our design decisions. So since we had design decisions, we're gonna go into some design theory. But first, of course, we are going to watch this video. And I have a few that are coming in right now. Yeah, Videos? Jasmine Allen's hair, not from yours. 
sekarang those that have just chimed in if you have just chimed in we are in 10.1 so you can go to your learn section i'll do it again go over here to your designer's approach hair design and we're just going to type in 10.2 I mean, 10.1, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. 10.1, <laughs> just speeding up here. And then it's going to be the third one over that says hair design theory. This is worth 100 points, so make sure that you take this take lesson challenge after um, Mr. Narcy is done. And um, I'm going to begin this video. Hair design is where form and texture combine with the direction and movement to capture a client's dreams and sense of style. Acquiring the skills of a hair design artist takes time and constant dedication to improve your techniques and sharpen your vision. In this chapter, we will concentrate on five key objectives, hair design theory, wet design techniques, thermal design techniques, long hair design theory, and long hair design techniques. Hair design is defined as the art of dressing and arranging hair to create temporary changes in the form and texture of the finished hair design. Just as a sculptor chisels stone and a fashion designer sews cloth, hair designers use the medium of hair to express their artistic vision. The three major hair design techniques are wet designing, thermal designing, and long hair designing. All are interrelated and important for you to understand. Wet designing uses molding, classic finger waving, and setting the hair with rollers and pin curls to create hair designs. Thermal designing, the most popular method, uses blow dryers, brushes, and curling irons, and requires minimal time. Clients can also closely duplicate salon results at home. Long hair designing is most often used for formal occasions, such as weddings or proms. Designing techniques vary by client, hair type, and the occasion. When creating hair designs, you will need to consider the whole design as well as its separate parts. Analyzing a hair design using the basic detail and abstract levels of observation provides you with a basis to recreate what you see and the ability to envision your own unique designs. During the basic level of observation, consider the three-dimensional form from all directions, determining where volume and indentation are positioned. Also, consider the overall shape, such as circular or triangular. Looking at the details, determine whether the surface texture is unactivated or activated. Also, determine the types of textures you see, such as straight, wavy, curly, tightly curled, or combination. Finally, consider the overall direction in which the hair is moving, as well as the directions within the form. This allows you to gain an abstract view of the hair design. In hair design, form is the result of volume and indentation. The form of a design can expand in any direction. Analyzing the position of volume and indentation from all angles allows you to view the outer shape of the design. Balance, whether symmetrical or asymmetrical, plays an integral part in the dynamics of a design and must be analyzed from all angles as well. With the sculpted form as the foundation, hair design allows you to subtly or drastically alter the shape of the form. A common design for the solid form is accentuating the perimeter weight area. Graduated forms can be altered with the addition of texture to the sides and or interior. Texture added throughout the increased layered form can further accentuate the activated texture. Uniformly layered forms can be altered throughout or within a given area depending upon the desired position of volume. In some cases, the resulting form will look completely different than the sculpted form. Reducing the amount of texture creates smooth, sleek finishes. In long hair designs, 
the final composition may bear little or no resemblance to the shape or form of the underlying hair sculpture. The addition of texture through hair designing services alters the surface appearance of the design and can also create changes in the shape. For instance, some texture changes expand the form or change the direction of the hair. Identifying the texture also helps to determine the finishing technique or type of tool needed to create the desired texture pattern. Texture patterns created in a hair design service can range from slow, undulating wave patterns to fast, highly activated curls, depending mainly on the diameter of the tools used. Large diameter tools produce slow waves and smaller diameters produce faster curls. Thermal design tools such as curling irons and crimping irons add texture to the hair, while flat irons are used to straighten the hair. The overall direction of a design can be analyzed according to where the hair moves in relation to the face. Directions are often described as hair moving forward or toward the face, backward or away from the face, to one side, or any combination of these. The direction in which the hair is worn can make a major change in a client's appearance. Besides the overall design direction, directional changes within the design can also be analyzed. These directional changes are straight, curved, or angled lines, which lead the eye through the design, giving the impression of motion. Tools play an important role in the creation of a hair design. These tools include blow dryers and their attachments, brushes, combs, rollers, and clips, as well as curling irons, pressing combs, and flat irons, just to name a few. Blow dryers and their attachments are used to air form wet hair while using brushes, combs, and your fingers to create temporary direction and texture changes. Concentrators focus the airflow to a small area, while diffusers spread a gentle airflow over larger areas and are used for creating scrunched textures. Brushes, such as vent and nine-row air-forming brushes, allow the greatest airflow to the hair so that the lengths can be dried quickly while directing them into the lines of the design. Round brushes are tools used to create volume and curved end texture. Cushion brushes have a soft padded base and, generally, nylon bristles. They are used on dry hair to relax a set, back brush, or smooth the surface of the hair. Rollers come in different diameters. Smaller rollers usually produce curlier effects but the exact results will vary according to the length of your client's hair. Cylindrical or straight rollers are usually used within straight shapes such as rectangles and triangles. Cone-shaped rollers are used in curvature shapes and have a progression of speeds because of their wide and narrow ends. Curling irons use heat to create temporary curvilinear texture patterns. They can have individual electric cords or can acquire heat from an electric base or stove. Professional curling irons are also referred to as Marcel irons, and they come in a variety of diameters. Pressing combs are used to apply heat and tension to temporarily straighten tightly curled hair. Flat or straightening irons consist of two flat heated plates. The hair is placed between the two plates near the base and then brought down to the ends in one smooth flowing movement. Undulating irons consist of two undulating or curved irons and are used to create an S pattern. Crimping irons consist of angular or serrated plates that, when heated, are used to create crimped texture. A hot brush or comb can also be used to curl hair. This is similar to the blow dryer because both styling tools have small motors that force air over a heating element and a slotted barrel that holds the brush or comb attachment. The main features of a comb are its size and the spacing between its teeth. 
Some combs have a pointed end called the tail, which is used to part or lift the hair. When a comb has widely spaced teeth, the resulting texture patterns in the hair reflect the shape and interval of the teeth. The molding comb is used for distributing and molding the hair, especially in finger waving. The master sketcher is a type of comb used for back combing and smoothing the surface of the hair. The fine tooth tail comb, also known as a drawing comb, is used for distribution, molding, parting, and scaling. The wide tooth tail comb is used for back combing and finishing techniques. Styling products or liquid tools are used before, during, and after designing to add shine and a range of support to the hair. Product usage is very important to the success of your design and becoming knowledgeable in this area will help you use and recommend the best products. Whether you are setting hair with rollers or pin curls, air forming or iron curling, the procedural steps you will use for the various types of wet and thermal designing are very similar. The physical actions and tools will vary, but the principles behind controlling the hair remain the same. Visualizing the finished design helps you identify the procedural steps required to create the design. In wet setting, the procedural steps are distribute, mold, scale, part, apply. The procedural steps for thermal settings are distribute mold, scale, part, apply. Achieving the final desired shape, texture, and direction of a hair design all begins with a basic understanding of distribution and molding. Distribution is the direction the hair is combed or dispersed over the curve of the head. To mold or shape the hair refers to designing wet hair in straight or curved lines after the hair has been distributed to create a pattern. Parallel distribution refers to straight or curved lines that originate from many points of origin and travel at an equal distance from one another. Radial distribution refers to straight or curved lines that originate from a single point of origin and radiate outward in any direction, like the spokes of a wheel. After the hair is molded into the lines of the design and prior to applying the tool of choice, the hair is sectioned or scaled. To scale or section means to carve out shapes in the proper predetermined size and proportion to establish the lines of the design. Rectangular shapes consist of parallel distribution. Once the shape is molded, a tail comb is used to scale the shape according to the size desired. Triangular shapes consist of radial or parallel distribution. Shapes can be combined to encompass a larger area. For instance, back-to-back -back triangles can create diamond or kite shapes. A trapezoid is a straight shape that includes two parallel and two non-parallel sides. Trapezoid shapes consist of parallel distribution and can also be combined with other shapes. Curvature or curved shapes or sections include circles, ovals, and oblongs. They imply motion and are generally used to create curvature directions or waves. Any of these curvature shapes can be distributed to move in either a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. A circle is a geometric closed curve shape bounded by a circumference and having equal radii from a center point of origin. Generally, in hair design, only a portion of the circle, such as the half circle, is used. An expanded circle, which is an extension of the half circle, is used to encompass a larger area than a half circle. Like the half circle, only a portion of the oval is used in hair design. An oval is a geometric curved shape bounded by a circumference having unequal radii from a point of origin. The unequal radial lines produce fast to slow speeds that result in unequal movements from the point of origin. The expanded oval, which is an extension of the half oval, is used to encompass a larger area than a half oval. An oblong is an elongated curvature shape with parallel C lines, consisting of a convex closed end and a concave open end. Oblongs contain many points of origin and parallel curve distribution, which can move in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Generally, two or more oblong shapes are used in hair design to create an alternating wave or S-shaped pattern. Partings are lines that subdivide shapes or sections to help distribute and control the hair.
These subsections are often called bases. Parallel horizontal partings within this rectangle shape create rectangular bases. Radial partings within the circular shape create triangular bases. Parallel diagonal partings are used to create rhomboid-shaped bases within an oblong. Once straight or curved shaped sections have been parted, the hair is set by applying a tool, such as a roller, round brush, or curling iron. Defined curls and waves are achieved in hair design by using rollers, pin curls, thermal irons, and or round brushes. The size of the curl will be determined by the diameter of the tool or the diameter of a pin curl. A curl has three components, a base, stem, and circle which are the same regardless of the tool chosen or type of pin curl. The base is the area between partings within a shape. The stem or arc is the hair between the scalp and the first turn of the hair around the roller, curling iron, or round brush. The circle is the hair that is positioned around the roller, thermal iron, or round brush. Base control refers to the size of the base in relation to the diameter of the tool and the position of the tool in relation to the base. The base control used in a hair design affects the amount of volume or closeness achieved. Straight volume base control creates lift, and straight indentation base control creates areas of hollowness or depression. The diameter and length of the tool determine the size of the base, which can be one diameter, one and a half diameter, or two diameters. One diameter means that the width of the section is exactly the same as the diameter of the tool being used. With a one and a half diameter section, the base is one and a half times the width of the tool. A two diameter section indicates that the width of the section is equal to two times the diameter of the tool. There are five base controls, on base, half off base, off base, under directed, and over-directed. With an on-base control, the tool or curl is centered between the top and the bottom partings of the base. The base is equal to the length and diameter of the roller or tool being used. An on-base control will result in the most volume and the strongest base strength. With a half-off base control, the tool or curl sits directly on the bottom parting of the base with half the curl on the base and half the curl off the base. The resulting curl has less base strength and less volume or lift than the on-base curl. With an off-base control, the tool or curl sits below the bottom parting of the base, creating minimum base strength and the least volume or lift. With an under-directed base control, the tool or curl sits in the lower portion of the base, but not on or below the bottom parting. The size of the base must be at least one and a half times the diameter of the tool or curl. The base control results in reduced volume and base strength. With an over-directed base control, the tool or curl sits in the upper portion of the base, but not on or above the parting. The size of the base must be at least one and a half times the diameter of the tool or curl. This base control results in exaggerated directional movement and volume or lift, with less strength at the base. With indentation, the position of the tool and the size of the base influence the amount of hollow space or flatness. Tool position also influences the strength of the base and mobility of the curl. Refer to your course book to see a complete chart of straight indentation tool positions. Curvature volume is set within curvature shapes, mm -hmm. such as the oblong, circle, or oval. Curvature indentation is usually combined with curvature volume. Both curvature volume and indentation are set within curved shapes, such as the oblong, circle, or oval. Rhomboid-shaped bases are used within an oblong. Trapezoid-shaped bases are used in the outer portion of an expanded circle, and triangle-shaped bases are used within a half circle or half oval. Curvature volume and indentation tool positions include on-base, under-directed, half-off base, and off-base. Curved partings are used for setting pin curls within curvature shapes. When air forming volume or indentation, it is the position, direction, and continual motion of the brush that control the amount of volume or indentation achieved. Whether rollers, pin curls, or brushes have been used to change the texture, direction, and movement of the hair, the techniques you use to finish the design will be very similar and include most if not all of the following steps. Relaxing,
dry molding. Back brushing or back combing. Defining the form and detailing. In order to achieve the design effects desired, you should become familiar with the tools, supplies, products, and equipment used during hair design services. Refer to your textbook for a complete chart of hair design tools, supplies, products, and equipment. There are precautions you should follow during any hair design service. Refer to your textbook for infection control and safety guidelines, as well as proper draping procedures for a hair design service. All hair services require that you communicate with your client prior to the service to ensure predictable results that meet your expectations and your clients. Refer to your textbook for hair design service essentials. Okay, guys, what do you think? Give me some feedback. This is the beginning of hair design. Talked a lot about rollers. Have you guys done any roller sets yet? You guys are muted. Yeah, I have. <laughs> Who's that? Adam. You've done roller sets. Nice. Yeah. I. I You're quiet. Huh? You're kind of quiet. Have you guys? Have you done roller sets? I have not. Oh yes, I have. I did the half. They're kind of fun. They're um. A lot of, they're old fashioned, but you know, I always think it's really nice to know that because sometimes the old fashioned way is the best way to understand new things. You know, because if you use curling irons, your curling irons are going to also use an on base, off base, half base. Um, depends on what you're looking for, the same as a roller. Uh, the only difference is, is a curling iron doesn't produce as um, firm results as a roller because you know it, it's a curling iron it works a little bit different but it's pretty fun to to do um sometimes you want to use a combination of rollers and even pin curls pin curls are actually fun to do there's some things you can do with pin curls that you can't do with rollers you know i used to make my classes do a whole head of pin curls and then you know, because we didn't have the dry, nice dryers that you guys have back there to dry your mannequins. We used to have to let them dry overnight and the next day, sometimes they'd still be wet and we'd have to comb them out. But, you know, you get those nice finger waves kind of with um, the pin curls and they would kind of look like um, the 30s, you know, look where they had those waves close to the head. It's kind of fun to do. Okay, so what am I supposed to do now? I'm not sure. We are going to go through our slideshow. Okay. And Even I, though you guys cannot see it, we're still going to go through it. They can't see the slideshow? No, because remember it turns dark. Huh? It turns dark, like they can't see it. In fact, we'll go on to our next video instead of that real quick. Because this is a very long chapter, so I'd rather go and do our next video. So go to 10.2, everybody. This is going to be wet design techniques. So we learned the different tools that we must use, our liquid tools, our handheld tools, okay? The different components of a curl and now we are going to go into our wet design. Cool. Wet designing is a hair design technique in which hair is manipulated into desired shapes and movements while wet and then allowed to dry. Wet designing includes molded designs such as finger waves, pin curl sets, and roller sets. 
Finger waving is the art of shaping and defining hair in graceful waves. Finger waving is a creative technique that moves and directs hair using the most basic tools, your own fingers, a comb, waving lotion, and sometimes hairpins. A finger wave is created with two complete oblong shapings using your fingers and a comb that are joined and connected by a ridge. Notice the hollow and ridge areas of each wave movement. The open end is identified by a dashed line and the closed end by a solid line. Pinching or pushing the ridge will create over direction of the wave. Pin curls or sculpture curls are one of many ways you are able to temporarily change the direction and texture of hair. A pin curl has three parts. The base is the area of the strand of the scalp between partings within a shape. Pin curl bases may be straight or curved. The stem or arc is the beginning of the strand that demonstrates the direction of the curl between the base and the first turn. It's the stem that determines the amount of movement a pin curl will have. The circle is the remaining end of the strand that forms the curl. The size or diameter of the circle determines the width and strength of the wave. Various base shapes are used when working with pin curls. Most often used shapes are triangle, square or rectangle, and crescent. Different shapes allow you to control base direction and to avoid splits in the finished hairstyle. Base sizes also vary in relation to the diameter of the circle, which in turn determines the resulting wave or curl. Pin curl base control refers to the size of the base in relation to the size of the curl and the curl's position relative to the base. There are five types of base control. On base or no stem. With on base control, the entire circle of the curl is positioned on the base. It produces a lift or strong curl effect. When used in a series, it creates a strong wave line. Half off base or half stem. With this base control, half of the circle is positioned below the base. It is used to produce an equal degree of predetermined direction and volume. With off base or full stem control, the stem and circle are positioned below the base. This base control is used when design closeness and direction is required, usually in the nape area or along the hairline. With underdirected base control, the circle sits on the lower portion of the base. This base control reduces volume. With overdirected base control, the circle sits in the upper portion of the base. This base control creates exaggerated direction. Straight volume pin curls are large stand-up pin curls that achieve a similar effect to hair wound around a roller, but result in weaker or less volume. Straight volume pin curls are used within straight shapes to create fullness and height. Straight volume pin curls are also referred to as stand-up, cascade pin curls, and barrel curls. There are three common types of curvature pin curls, flat, volume, and indentation. Flat pin curls are used to create closeness. The base, stem, and circle are flat. To create a flat pin curl, a clockwise oblong is first molded and sectioned at the front hairline. Flat pin curls begin at the concave end. Part the hair from the center of the shape in the second direction. Then, smooth the hair to create a ribbon-like effect. Keep the base flat and form the circle. Secure the flat pin curl in the second direction. Repeat the same techniques to complete the shape. Volume pin curls are used to create fullness and height. Volume pin curls are also referred to as stand-up or cascade pin curls. Barrel curls are large stand-up pin curls. They achieve a similar effect to hair wound around a roller, but result in weaker or less volume. To create a volume pin curl, a counterclockwise oblong is molded first. Volume pin curls begin at the convex end. Part the hair in the first direction. Distribute the hair into your palm, then use the tail comb to lift the base and reinforce the stem. Smooth and ribbon the hair and form the circle around your index finger. Volume pin curls are used to create fullness. The base and stem are lifted and the circle turns under.
Secure the volume pin curl inside the circle in the first direction. Repeat the same techniques to complete the shape. Indentation pin curls have a flat base while the stem and circle are lifted. Indentation pin curls are used to create hollow space and flare. They generally follow volume pin curls in a hair design. To create an indentation pin curl, a clockwise oblong is molded first. Indentation pin curls begin at the concave end. Use a tail comb to part the hair from the center of the shape in the second direction. Use your index finger to keep the base flat while curving the stem with a comb. Then smooth the hair and form the circle up and away from the base. Secure the indentation pin curl through the circle in the second direction. The base is flat while the stem and circle are lifted. Repeat the same techniques to complete the shape. A wave pattern that combines finger waves and flat pin curls is called a skip wave. Skip waves consist of alternating oblongs connected by a ridge. One oblong is molded and the other is set with pin curls or rollers. Rollers are used to set the hair and can achieve many of the same effects that are achieved with pin curls. However, one roller sets the same amount of hair as two to four stand-up pin curls. Plus, setting with rollers allows you to set hair with tension for a firmer, longer lasting set. Rollers come in different diameters. Smaller rollers usually produce curlier effects, but the exact results will vary according to the length of your client's hair. Cylindrical rollers are usually used within straight shapes, such as rectangles and triangles. A rectangle set with rollers will achieve straight directional movement and is generally used as a fill-in or blending shape with curvature shapes set on either side. For a triangular shape, the length of rollers used will progress from short to long to encompass the shape from the narrow end to the wide end. The most efficient way to set rollers within a straight movement or shape is to use cylindrical rollers. These rollers have the same width throughout and are usually used within straight shapes such as the rectangle, triangle, or trapezoid. To measure the base size of a straight shape, the diameter and length of the roller are used. Sometimes you may wish to create curvature movements within the hair design. The most efficient way to set rollers within a curvature movement or shape is to use cone-shaped or conical rollers. Within circular shapes, such as the half circle, the roller sits one diameter away from the point of origin or the point from which the movement radiates. The base is, therefore, the length of the roller plus one diameter. Refer to your course book for more information on using rollers in curvature shapes, such as ovals and oblongs. Once you learn how to create movement, direction, volume, and closeness using wet hair design techniques, such as molding and roller and pin curl control, you will be able to combine those techniques to create a multitude of hair designs. Oblongs may be positioned anywhere on the head and in any direction. Generally, two or more oblongs are set in alternating directions to create a strong wave pattern. Refer to your textbook and review the wet design procedure overview. Okay guys, by the looks of it, when do you think that these techniques are being used? Anybody can answer. When are these different wet setting techniques and rollers? Because as you can see in the new shops and the new age stuff, a lot of people are using plugins. It's usually a plug-in curl and iron, a plug-in flat iron. And when I began starting out, even before then, it was always put it in the stove. Those, those portable fun. stoves and, you know, and wet setting, that was a big thing. Proms, because I went to prom in the 90s and everyone got their hair done for prom, but everyone were waiting in the salons getting a wet set because wet sets will last for a long time. They're built to last other than just the regular curling iron or flat iron or whatever you may use to get the different textures in your hair design but what do you guys where where are we using these different techniques i just gave you a bunch of hints 
but I want you to incorporate it in today's because I see a lot of these designs today um, with some of the celebrities that are wearing things and a lot of um, women are curling their hair but getting the results as if it was had a wave in it, those glory waves, okay? You see finger waves these days too. And the thing is, they're not doing it with finger waves, like this technique. Yeah. They're doing it with the curling iron. Or That's, it's kind of difficult for me to do the, the curling iron. I, I would actually just do finger waves at that point, or maybe some pin curls. Uh, you do the flat to the head, and then you do some um, not quite stand up, but just a little bit, a little not, not so flat to just give a little more volume. But these are fun. This is where you guys use your creativity to incorporate different things into what you're doing. People will think you guys are great. Yeah, and it goes along with um, fashion designs, the things that you do want to learn. I don't know exactly where everyone's going with their career, but it's always good to know these techniques if you get into wedding hair, prom hair, editorial magazines. They are using these techniques still. And this is paying a lot of money, you know, and wig making. A lot of people are wearing wigs. And this is where it's coming from. They're molding that wig and molding these designs in instead of just using their regular curling iron. You guys get that? And so far as base control, I'm pretty sure you guys have tried to curl hair and it didn't turn out the way that you thought it would or it was really flat, like the curls were nice, but it was really flat. That's where those bases come in at, okay? As you can see, there are bases that you're gonna be working with inside of your hair design, using all kinds of different shapes, different areas of the head, different techniques. Like we were just saying, the pin curls, you might wanna do a finger wave, skip that, do a pin curl. You might wanna do all roller set, Okay, there are different ways of getting these wet designs, even braiding the hair while it's wet and letting it dry and unbraiding it and then you have that crimpy like effect. Crimp look. I love that too. That is what your wet designs are for, people. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is, I know you guys have a doll head, right? You have a doll head at home? I don't yet. You don't have one yet? Well, maybe try one on yourself. I, I, have, to, I have kids, I'll use them. <laughs> yeah, I'll use them. Try a pin curl. Try using, go back into this video 10.2 and looking at those base controls, looking at that pin curl and just give it a try. This is some stuff that we'll be doing in class anyway, but it doesn't hurt to try it beforehand. So I encourage you guys to try those pin curls. Look up different hairstyles that are being used that have the pin curls and the roller sets incorporated. One of my favorite eras is like the 40s. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful hair, beautiful designs. And um, maybe we'll see a video next time we get on, on how this all began, where it actually came from. You know what I would do sometimes at, at work is, um, show a video of an old movie star the the best one i think the most fun one was always lucille ball do you guys ever watch i love lucy does any, has anybody ever watched it they're classic i mean i still watch it whenever it's on and i would play a video on how to recreate her style and i'd let the students do it yeah. and it, it was really fun to see the different ways that because it doesn't necessarily have to be rolled in rollers most of the students always did those in curling irons anyway but just to get that look is, is really really fun i think i gave them um a marilyn monroe marilyn monroe is one of my favorite old-time glamour movie stars but just to create that big soft wave that she would wear all the time Sometimes she wore it pushed to one side and a big old flip. I think that was considered very sexy at the time. If you guys ever remember her when she um, sang happy birthday to President Kennedy, you know, with that big old flip to the side. Those things are so classic. They're, they're just, um, you look at Marlena Dietrich and some of those old movie stars that wore finger waves and stuff like that. It's, it's so cool. 
it's so cool that that movie stars don't wear them similar to that although i do see some they've been starting back if you look yeah, at some of the red carpet really events glamorous they're getting again. fancy smancy i think they're looking back at those old hollywood mm -hmm. and that old glam so i think they're starting to take some sort of liking to it. I think it would be fun to look at a red carpet looks for some of the movie stars today and try to play with those kind of things. Why do I think of Scarlett Johansson? Doesn't mm -hmm. she kind of wear sometimes those waves or, you know, those um, those kind of things? I, I, you know, just really pretty stuff, you know? We got away from really dressing up hair and it's, it's really coming back because clothes are you know, it's they're just getting a lot more glamorous these days. I think it's so neat. It is neat. Anybody got some input? What do you think? What do you think about hair design? This is always a hard. Uh, 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 I think a lot of times with rollers and finger waves, a lot of the students don't like doing them because they say they're not going to do this stuff. But it's like learning to walk, you know, when you're a baby, you can't just start running. You have to walk first before you can run because you gotta learn balance and stuff like that. Well, you have to learn fundamentals of hairstyling, which these are basic fundamentals from learning these because what these are actually teaching you is control, direction, base, you know, those type of things. Um, and from doing those, I mean, you can take these fundamentals and put them into your curling iron looks or even your flat irons. You know, you can create curls with flat irons, right? Mm -hmm. Don't we do those loose beachy waves with flat irons? You know, I, I had a, a problem when um, flat irons, when girls started using them because girls these days use them to create flat. They want flat. Well, you know, when I started using a flat iron, it was in the 90s, people with curly hair or wavy hair were, were using the flat irons to control their hair, but they still wanted volume. So I have a bad habit, and I say it's a bad habit, of creating volume with the flat iron. And when I would do that on the students, they Mr. Narcy, I don't want it that way. Mm -hmm. well, what do you mean you don't want, it's flat, it's straight. Well, they wanted it pasted to the head. They wanted no volume and stuff. That's, I mean, you know, that was what they did in the 60s, if you think about that. You know, when girls wore their hair long and flat. And, but we didn't have flyer, flat irons at that time. And blow dryers didn't start coming around till the, the late 60s and the early 70s. You know, so basically they would just, I remember um, my cousins had long hair and they would wash their hair and what they would do is they would sit outside in the sun and just continually comb through their hair so it would dry flat. Or sometimes I had a friend who used to wrap her hair around her head. She was Puerto Rican. Fat wraps. Yeah, she used to fly. I know I, I went to her mm -hmm. house one time and she didn't want to come to the door because she had her hair wrapped around. It hers, she put it under her chin and then pulled it up. <laughs> and it was like, she didn't want to come to the door. It looked like she had a toothache or something. But it was, it was funny, but that's how she flattened her hair. And then, you know, they came out with um, not relaxers because relaxers have always been out there, but they came up with a relaxer that um, kind of used um, a thio type of uh, chemistry mm -hmm. because it's not as harsh as the sodium hydroxide. So they started using those and it was more like a perm because it still had to be neutralized. You know, we started doing stuff like that in the, the 90s for, for people wanting flat styles. But even that can produce a lot of damage, just like your sodium hydroxide. So it was kind of a nice thing that flat irons came in, in you know, came in style for people to use because they were starting to do that. But you can get damage from the flat irons just as well, too. I mean, they can create thermal damage. So even that, you guys still want to be careful. Do any of you guys use a flat iron on your hair? Yeah, you make it real straight, right? It's Riley. Yeah, yeah. Now, and the one that I have is really old, so it, 
it like struggles sometimes, but I plan on getting a new one soon. But yeah, I do straighten my hair. Not all the time, but yeah, it's it's fun to do, but it's like it's you know, yeah, it's not something you wanna gotta give your hair a break. Your hair a break, yeah. Or use mm -hmm. the proper things on it to protect it. You know, they make thermal protectors on I think these days we what were we using? Um something from um Sebastian that you used to shake up and it would have these little flecks of sparkle stuff in there and you spray it on the hair, but it actually protected the hair from when you were flat ironing it. And I forgot the name of it, but anyway. Along this African American hair of mine, this black hair, we didn't protect it. Yeah. <laughs> we put some grease on it and put the flat that um press and comb on it. Um and use the, some royal crown yeah. grease or some blue magic grease and press it down to smithereens. But it's a trip because my hair was very long and pretty as a child. I don't know what the formulas are to bake, but it doesn't do as well for my hair. No, the, the products have changed, but even black um, clients these days, they don't use all that grease on the hair because they right. want the hair to move. Yes. You know, and, and you know, that kind of hair doesn't move if you put a lot of oils on it to to protect it, but the, curl, the the thermal straighteners that you use these days are different than using those ones you with the yes. heat in the <laughs> oven. Have you guys ever used those yet? The oven heated ones? I think you have to learn it, but um, I, I- I still teach it. Yeah. Even though it's not used in the salon, it's a- I think like you guys a, still have to learn it, yeah. It, yeah, it's a long lost technique that was used in it's equally important to at least know how to use it, operate it. What if you if that was the only tool that you had in life, how would you use it? I taught so it, I taught cool. it too. So it's like yeah, I, I mean I can do them as well, but I'm gonna tell you I don't like to, but I will I will I will show you guys. And then I used to have the students try it and they actually used it on their dolls. And I will tell you sometimes I, I had one girl burn a piece of, burn one of the curls off and it just came right out with the curling iron. Well, you know, you're supposed to have a wet towel there, cool the iron off a little bit when you pull it out of the oven because it's really hot. And you want to make Test sure- Test it on that next trip? Yeah, yeah. Make sure if it scorches the next trip, it's not, it's too hot to use. Make sure your comb goes right next to the scalp before you start curling. And you know, you can use them really safely, but they're scary. And they used a lot of bad language because some of the girls did burn themselves with them. <laughs> and and that's, you know, I mean- Good old war wounds. Well, I didn't know girls could, could sound like, um, <laughs> like truck drivers, <laughs> but they would use some really colorful language because they would burn themselves. And that's a nice burn. It's, it's a, Oh yeah, yeah. I, that stove. Yeah. I tapped my fingers on top of it and the pads of my fingers were gone. Uh, but it's a nice stove to be around if it's a cold day and the cold is inside the room. It's nice and warm around it, but boy, they're really interesting to use. And it does heat up the place. Yeah, it does. It's hot. It's nice and warm. Well, sometimes you could use those on a stove, you know, a, a, a gas burning stove. You just stick it right on there. And That's how it something. originally was. Yeah. Right on the stove. It's not funny. Kitchen hairstylist. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to take a break. Take 10 minutes. Come oh, on back. Just one thing. I remember in the 60s how they did make the hair nice and flat. Now that I think about it, they used to use an iron, the an iron. actual iron that you iron clothes with. But you had to put something on, <laughs> on the hair before you took that iron to it. <laughs> but they, if the hair was long enough, they would actually lay their head on that ironing board and take the iron and press it. And it would actually make it nice and smooth. <laughs> Can you imagine doing that? Don't try it though, please. <laughs> okay. All right. 10 minutes, people. And then we come back and I get to talk. Yeah. Oh, I like boy. hearing you talk. Okay.
Okay, guys, we're all back. Couple still missing. So about one or two more minutes, real quick. No. So if I smoke, where would I smoke it? Not that I smoke, but Okay. okay, guys, let's head into thermal design techniques. That's your 10.3. <clears throat> Many styles can be created using thermal styling techniques, such as blow drying or iron curling. Thermal designing is the technique of drying and styling hair by using a handheld dryer while simultaneously using your fingers and or a variety of brushes. It also includes techniques that utilize pressing combs and or thermal curling irons. Remember that hair is composed predominantly of proteins connected by both physical and chemical bonds. Many of these physical bonds are hydrogen bonds that are easily broken down by both water and heat. As these hydrogen bonds break down, the protein chains are able to shift to accept a new position, but only temporarily after the new configuration cools. That's why it is necessary to allow the hair to cool completely prior to brushing or combing. Since heat and water can both change the hair's curl pattern, thermal styling services are considered to be only temporary. It is important to protect hair from excessive heat. Sure. If working with a stove heated thermal iron, you'll need to check the temperature by testing the iron on a piece of white paper towel. Air forming or blow drying refers to the process of drying the hair and at the same time designing it to create a new form. Blow dryers are available in different sizes and shapes and wattages, generally from 1000 watts to 1800 watts. By using blow dryer attachments, such as concentrators and diffusers, airflow can be pinpointed or allowed to flow over larger areas. To hold the dryer, loop the electric cord over the wrist. This allows the cord to travel in the same direction as the blow dryer, 
and prevents the cord from hitting the client or trailing on the floor. Refer to your textbook for air forming guidelines. Air forming can be performed with a blow dryer in one hand and a brush in the other. Small brushes are used for curlier styles and short hair. Larger brushes are used for smoother results or for longer hair. When air forming for volume and indentation, it is the position, direction, and continual motion of the brush that control the amount of volume or indentation achieved. Finger styling is a technique in which the fingers are used to style and manipulate the hair. The hair is lifted or held flat while drying to create the desired finish. Scrunching is a form of finger styling. In this technique, the hair is squeezed to introduce a texture pattern that the hair responds to naturally. Hair pressing or silking is used to temporarily straighten tightly curled hair. The pressing comb is used to apply heat and tension to temporarily straighten tightly curled hair. The pressing comb is used on totally dry hair in preparation for the silking or straightening iron application, which usually follows. Thermal curling adds temporary curl texture by using thermal or curling irons. They're also called Marcel curling irons. That's because they were first introduced by Marcel Grateau in 1875. Electric curling irons have a heating element controlled by a thermostat that maintains a constant temperature during use. There are various ways to hold the iron. Some hair designers prefer to use only the little finger to open the iron and the other fingers to close the iron. Other designers find it easier to use the little finger and ring finger to open the iron. Now let's take a look at how different curling iron techniques and various texture patterns can be achieved by varying the position of the curling iron along the hair strand. With a base to ends technique, the curling iron is first positioned slightly away from the base. The curling iron is then turned toward then away from the scalp, making one complete revolution. This technique is repeated until the entire hair strand is fed through. A heat resistant comb is positioned between the curling iron and the scalp to protect the client's scalp from accidental burning. For volume based control, as in this example, the barrel of the iron is positioned underneath the hair. For an indentation base control, position the barrel of the curling iron on top of the hair strand. With the ends to base technique, the curling iron is positioned at the ends of the hair and then rotated toward the base. With the ends technique, the curling iron is positioned to add curl texture at the ends only. In this example, the barrel of the iron is positioned on top of the hair to create a flipped effect. The curling iron can be used to create Marcel waves or alternating oblongs along the hair strand. The hair strand is placed into the curling iron with the barrel positioned on top of the hair strand. A comb is used to help direct the hair in alternating directions to form the wave. That's so cool. For the spiral technique, the curling iron may be positioned vertically or diagonally at the base. The curling iron is then turned while gradually feeding the hair strand into the curling iron until the entire strand is fed through and the ends are within the iron. The curling iron is then open to release the hair. Straightening or flat irons consist of two flat heated plates. The hair is placed between the two plates near the base and then brought down to the ends in one smooth flowing movement. The technique of straightening or silking the hair may be repeated until the desired degree of straightness is achieved. Unlike straightening irons, which consist of two flat irons, crimping irons consist of two irons that have an angular or serrated pattern. The hair is positioned between the two crimped plates, which are then closed upon the hair. The resulting texture is angular, which is often referred to as crimped.
undulating irons consist of two undulating or curved irons that create an S pattern. The hair is positioned between the two irons, which are then closed upon the hair. When performed along the entire strand, the iron is positioned next to the last wave pattern to create a continuous undulating pattern. <clears throat> Before using a pressing comb or thermal iron, you must consider how to properly clean and maintain them. Refer to your textbook for the thermal design procedure overview. And right on to 10.4. This is what we and this is your, in that um, the last one. They're going to do some mountain air design. I love that shape. Today's long hair designs have a wealth of ancient styles to draw upon. Unlike cut, color, and perm services, which offer long lasting effects. Long hair design offers a temporary change from simple braids to intricate avant-garde designs. The creative possibilities are endless. Long hair design is generally performed for special occasions. Understanding how to look at a photograph using the basic detail and abstract levels of observation not only allows you to reproduce what you see, it also provides a means of communicating clearly with your client. It's placement of volume within the design that creates overall form. If volume is positioned in a specific area, such as the crown or nape, it automatically draws the eye to that area. The opposite is true if volume is positioned equally throughout the design. The overall shape of the design can be broken down further by analyzing the shape or shapes and form within the design. Keep in mind that the size and position of individual shapes influence the feeling of the design, allowing you unlimited creative options. In long hair design, texture is identified as unactivated or smooth and activated or patterned. The direction of a form is established by the flow of the shapes within a design. The direction of the hair implies motion and plays an important part in the dynamics of a design. The celestial axis can be used to analyze the overall direction of the form. Directions within the form can be identified as clockwise, counterclockwise, vertical, horizontal, and or diagonal, and can lead your eye rhythmically throughout the design. Since long hair designing is a service that is often performed for special occasions, you will want to give extra emphasis and attention to exceeding the client's expectations and creating a beautiful and flattering design. Some specific considerations to keep in mind as you communicate and work with your client to ensure that successful design decisions will be made are facial features, body structure, hair length, density, and texture, occasion, formal or informal, wardrobe, and impression. Refer to your course book for a chart on client considerations. Once the desired shape, direction, and position of volume are identified, you will follow a step-by-step -step procedure to ensure control of the form as it is being created. The long hair design procedures are distribute, section, part, apply, and detail. To perform professional long hair services, you need a selection of products, tools, supplies, and equipment. Refer to your course book for a complete list of long hair design essentials. There are precautions you should follow during any long hair design service. Refer to your textbook for infection control and safety guidelines. Communicating with your client prior to the service will help you avoid misunderstandings and ensure predictable results. Refer to your textbook for a chart on long hair design service essentials.
Today's long hairstyles have a wealth of ancient styles to draw upon. Unlike cut, color, and perm services, which offer long-lasting effects, long hair styling offers a temporary change. From simple braids to intricate avant-garde designs, the creative possibilities are endless. Long hair styling is generally performed for special occasions. It's placement of volume within the style that creates overall form. If volume is positioned in a specific area, such as the crown or nape, it automatically draws the eye to that area. The opposite is true if volume is positioned equally throughout the style. Once you learn basic long hair styling techniques, you will be able to create various hairstyles as well as combine thermal and wet hair styling techniques to create an endless number of designs. braid is a popular braid generally performed on younger clients. Explain options to your clients, including the position of the braid, to help build relationships and to ensure that you meet your clients' needs. The three-strand over braid, also known as the French braid, has an inverted appearance. The braid is positioned vertically down the center. Art shows a crescent-shaped section of the front hairline. Partings that conform to the curve of the head are taken toward the center for the remainder of the exercise. Distribute the hair straight back. Take a crescent-shaped section of the fringe area. Subdivide into three equal strands. Cross the left strand over the center strand, then cross the right strand over the center. You have now completed the three-strand sequence. Note that a palm-up hand position is used. Cross the left strand over the center again. Take a diagonal parting on the left side and join it with the center strand. Switch hands and repeat the same procedures on the other side. Good way is prepping the hair before even starting your long hair design. You need to put a couple of curls in it so that it's easy to bend. Yeah. And yeah. so you don't have to fight with it or pre-texturize it with some sort of liquid tool. Pick so up consistent partings as you work from side to side using the same procedures. To maintain control and tension on the hair, try to always hold the three strands in one hand. As you work toward the nape, conform your hands to the curve of the head to create a contoured effect. Continue to use the three-strand overbraid technique as you work toward the ends.
Secure the ends with a coated elastic band. The finish shows a contoured overbraid with an elongated form. It's underneath so that it has more of a smooth appearance. What they're looking for is the over. This three strand underbraid is performed on the scalp using firm tension. Alternately crossing yeah, the outside yeah. strands under the center strand positions the braid on the surface, which many clients find more interesting than the three strand overbraid. The result will be a projected or visible braid appearance. Distribute the hair straight back. Take a crescent-shaped section at the fringe area. Subdivide the hair into three equal strands. Cross the right strand under the center strand, then cross the left strand under the center strand. You have now completed the three-strand sequence. Cross the right strand under the center again. Take a diagonal parting on the right side and join it with the center strand. Switch hands and repeat the same procedure on the other side. Note that a palm down hand position is used. Pick up consistent size partings and work from side to side using the same procedures. To maintain control and tension on the hair, try to always hold the three strands in one hand. As you work toward the nape, conform your hands to the curve of the head to create a contoured effect. Continue to use the three-strand underbraid technique as you work toward the ends. Secure the ends with a coated elastic band. The thing 
finish shows beautiful braided texture on the surface of the hair. Does anybody do that, those kind of braids on themselves or on anybody? I can't braid it all. So I don't hear you guys. I can't really braid it all, so no. Oh, so we have to learn, huh? It's, it's really fun to do the braid that sits on top of the hair like she just showed me. That's a little bit more difficult for me. And that's um, the easiest one. To yeah, learn. see, I think when you go over, it, it, that's easy. Mm -hmm. But to do it under, I don't think my hands want to manipulate like that. It's, it's, it's hard. It just depends on what you, I don't, I don't know. The coordination of it. Yeah, it's a, it's a little, I mean, if you got into braiding and see the coordination of, of doing both of those braids, it is different, it's, although it looks like it's not, because one you're just going over and the other one you're going under. But for some reason, the underneath braid is hard. The French twist is an elegant look that can be adapted in a variety of ways. It is a popular classic requested by women of all ages. This French twist positions a vertical roll for an elongated smooth finish with the ends left loose in the crown creating a combination of textures. After sectioning the fringe, back brush or back comb the right side diagonally toward the center back. Then smooth the surface with a brush without removing the back combing. Secure the hair with a line of interlocked bobby pins slightly off center to prepare for the position of the roll. Interlocking the bobby pins will prevent the bobby pins from slipping and create extra support. back home and smooth the lengths on the left side. direct and twist the lengths counterclockwise to create a vertical roll. Secure the roll using bobby pins and hairpins.
then back comb and arrange the ends and fringe lengths to finish the hair as desired. The finish shows a casual look based on a classic style. Oh, that's classic, all right. That's very pretty, though. I like that one better, though. This one, the blonde. Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, guys, any feedback, questions, comments? Are you guys ready to do some real hair? Is that what the issue is? <laughs> like, oh, we're just ready for real hair. We'll get there, no worries. Let's see how many. Yes. Somebody saying something? All right, guys. So your assignments for chapter 10. You are going to take all of the lesson challenges, 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, and 10.4. Okay, all of those should be done today because it doesn't take that long. So again, 10.1, 10.2, 10.3, 10.4. You guys, when you come in this weekend, we will have a test on chapter eight and chapter 10. So I would like to see that you guys have done your smart notes for chapter eight and all of your take lesson challenges for chapter 10. Again, practice those pin curls and we'll be working on these things. Are, is your class still working on well, We're hair doing design? some long hair. We're still doing some twists tomorrow. Well, in my class, we're still gonna be working with some rollers and we'll incorporate some pin Has curls. Has my in class there. done rollers yet? Have you guys done rollers and pin curls and things? They are. Yeah. Okay. So we still are going to work on some twists, but we're going to actually do a style, some styles with twists. Um, we're going to do one right out of the um, the video, and then we're going to let you guys just create your own with twists. Um, I don't know that you guys are ready to do a French roll, but you know, I, I'm going to have to demonstrate that before you guys do it. How fun for me. Um, <laughs> I haven't done a French twist in a while. I used to do that on my grandmother, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> but they are very pretty. <clears throat> and, um, you know, again, those are in classic movies. I think of Audrey Hepburn when I think of uh, French rolls. I know you guys know who she is, or French twist. I want to call them a French roll. A French roll is something you eat, isn't it? Well, no, they have French rolls, too. Oh, they do? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I like the ones you can eat, but <laughs> the ones in there. But um, anyway, um, you know, those, again, remind me of classic movies, so they're kind of fun to know how to do. You don't have to do them always, which is kind of nice for you guys that aren't really into that part of it. Um, you know, there's a lot to learn about doing hair, you know, because you just can't pick up the hair and start uh, trying to create this style. There's a way to control the hair. That's why the sectioning that they show you and stuff like that, how to do that is all important. That is a really colorful um, sweater or blouse that she has on. Mm -hmm. I can see you at least. 
Riley, your sweater, is it a sweater or a shirt? Do you hear me? It's a yeah, it's a shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's really colorful. It's like, at least I could see you. It is, yeah, it is very colorful. <laughs> yeah. They're happy colors. Mm -hmm. um, I bet you felt good when you put it on, huh? Yes, of course, always. Oh, yeah, yellow is my favorite color, so I like having like the bright colors and everything on there. Really cool. Anyway, just um, you know, do your lessons like she says. Uh, my class will be doing some twists on uh, tomorrow, and um, hopefully we can have some fun in there. Um, I'd like to find a way to put some music on in there because we need some music, don't yeah, you think? Speaker. Huh? Can you help bring the Bluetooth speaker? The what? The Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, don't you guys think we need some music? Yeah, I think music always helps. It, it, I know it gets my your creativity moving. Um, I don't I don't know that everybody would be happy with this kind of music that we like to put on in there, but you guys have to deal with that, okay? <laughs> because I can't make everybody can't make everybody happy. We try to, but anyway, we'll do the best we can. But I think music will help us. Um, I don't know if I can put it through there. I know mine has a, <coughs> my computer has an HDMI screen. Yeah, it can go either on the TV or Bluetooth speaker. I can put in my laptop and play some um, either Pandora or um, YouTube music. Something. We'll try to figure out something because I think that would, and they don't mind that we do. No, that um, motivates. Music motivates. Music is motivating. Yeah. Okay. So, like Miss V said, you guys do 10, uh, 10 point one, two, three, and four, and um, she wants those done by tomorrow. Is that it? Yes, those and should then, be done. And then this weekend we have a test on chapter eight and chapter ten. Okay. So study, study. I want to ask you guys, please, 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 be prepared to unmute yourself. If I've seen you once when you first clock in, I know what you look like, that you're there, that you're paying attention. If I've never seen you or don't see you on video, we cannot give full credit. So from here on out, I need to see, um, I need to see your faces, need some feedback. You know, this is a really tough crowd and this is a really tough way of learning, but the kids got to do it. We've got to do it. And we got to make the best of you guys. And I really enjoy seeing you guys. We enjoy teaching, um, but we enjoy when you're present and that we know you're here. It's just like coming into class. You're not invisible when you walk into class. I can see you, okay? You're not invisible. You are a real person. You're not a robot. I'm not a robot. I'm here. I just haven't really liked to show myself today because look, my hair ain't done and a little cray cray, but at least you know that I'm here. She's right? always pretty though, huh? Thank you. Yeah. We are um, clocking your hours. We're checking your hours. We're even doing your time cards for you. Oh when you guys God. come in, you guys will be signing your own time cards and learning how to do that as well. It makes it a little bit easier for everything to go around. You know, it just makes everything flow. So you'll be learning your time cards. It, those that have already had time cards, you already pretty much know what they're about. But we are tracking that. We're tracking these theory hours and putting them where it's needed. Your assignments that you zip within uh, on your doll heads. We do count those as hair designs. And you wanna get as many operations and as much theory as you possibly can before your 1600 hours is over. It's just showing your willingness to, you know, move further and to actually learn your craft right now. Even though we have to do it this way, we are ensuring it on our part as instructors, we are ensuring that you're trying to get something out of it. Okay, guys? Okay, you guys can do me a favor. When you guys are clocking in oh, on your yes. time, uh, doing it at home, because I had to work on time cards this week and I don't know those, the, the paperwork yet. So it was really fun for me. But when you guys clock in for theory on at home, long distance, you I guess the lab, is that what they clock in at? Mm -hmm. Okay, when you clock in, 
remember to clock out too because I got a lot of clock-ins but nobody clocked out so you guys got to remember to clock out as well because all we can give you is so much you know that doesn't mean we can give you all those hours so just just remember to clock in and out okay please everybody okay all right so you guys enjoy the rest of your day We'll see you guys tomorrow. Ms. B, you said the test that we're having this weekend is going to be on 8 and 10, right? 8 and 10, yes. Okay, awesome. All right, so um, I, have a question. I have a question. Um, do you, where did you guys see or get find those videos for 10 4 for like the braiding? I couldn't find it on here. Um, so I'll go, can you see? You can see my screen right now, right? Uh, yeah, almost, yeah, okay. So you're gonna go to your learn. Yeah, yeah. And then go to hair design, designers of yeah. clothes. Uh -huh. You can go to this search bar right here, type in 10.4, I think we were in. Yeah, uh, uh-huh. Uh-oh, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> Okay, so go into 10.4. Uh-huh. And then you have all of these braid videos. Uh, I don't. I just have the theory one. I just have the first one. You only have this? this yeah. Uh-huh. And none of these to follow? No. Interesting. Let's see what happens here. Because sometimes it's all on one. No, okay. Is anyone else having that same issue? Let's see what happens if we type in 10.4a. Yeah, I tried that too and nothing came up. It said um, zero results. Yeah, I have the same thing. <laughs> Interesting. May, I'll take a look around inside of this catalog and see if I can find it for you guys. And when you guys show up tomorrow, we'll go through that. Okay. I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't know why it's not. It's okay. But for now, just do the take lesson challenges and then so far as designs and getting into the other books we'll figure that out okay i'll okay. actually make myself a note to make sure that we talk about that okay. and then we're also adding on 10.5 right yes okay that whole chapter 10. okay all right just making sure i don't know it's a long chapter though let me see Yep, long hair design techniques. Oh, that's why, because it was just the show how to braids and stuff. This is the one that will show them how to do little curls. Do you have, can you guys see if you have 10.5? No, I, I have the 10.5, but it's just the first video. Oh, so I don't have a 10.5. Okay, so we are having some funky stuff happening here. I will make note of that. We'll get it situated, guys, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Do all right, all have a homework. Good. Please study. Read those chapters. I will check to see if you guys did um, all of those take challenges. Again, we'd like them done before. You can do them today. Just by tomorrow, you guys, okay? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Bye. Later. Bye. I can find what I'm uh, I had a question. Hello? Yes. Uh, you said that there was going to be a test this weekend. Uh, is it going to be online too? You are on, you're not um, in person, right? You're just online for now? Yeah, for right now, I'm just online. So I will, okay, now I'm going to have to give you a test. Eight and ten. So what I'll do is I'll personally zip with you on the two de two tests that you can take online, okay? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, baby. How old is the baby? She's going to be one in October. Oh, wow. she looks like a little infant. 
and you She's hope crazy. you're okay with <laughs> She's big. <laughs> Oh, baby. But okay, so you'll send them through text or? Yeah, I'll zip with you. Okay, Perfect. all right, cool. No one else thank will you. see the text or anything. I'll just zip with you your assignments, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome.